This is concept four notes of our energy flow unit, and we are going to talk about photosynthesis. So we have talked about how all organisms need a constant supply of energy in order to survive. We mentioned in concept three how for pretty much all life on Earth, that ultimate source of energy is the sun, the exception being those deep sea vent bacteria that can do chemosynthesis, but everything else we're going to indirectly or directly get that energy from the sun. So how does it get converted into a source that is usable? That is done through a process called photosynthesis that plants do. So this is the overall process by which sunlight or solar light energy, water and carbon dioxide are going to be chemically converted, so we're doing a chemical reaction here, into chemical energy stored in glucose, which is a sugar or a carbohydrate. So if you remember um, from physical science when we talked about energy conversions, this is a light energy to a chemical energy conversion happening in this chemical reaction. And this equation is like the recipe for it. Six carbon dioxides and six waters are going to make, with the help of solar energy, one glucose molecule. C6H12O6 is your glucose and then six oxygens. I love this picture because it shows where we're going to get everything. So water gets absorbed um, through the roots of the plant. Minerals that'll help just with the overall nutrition of the plant will be absorbed there too. Carbon dioxide comes in through um, these pores in the plant leaves called stomata and oxygen will leave through those stomata and then sugar um, is also made and it'll basically just be in the plant and then light energy is absorbed. Okay let's break down this equation. Reactants are just ingredients and they're marked here are carbon dioxide, CO2, and then water which is H2O. The products are your results, they're what is made. Now solar energy from the sun is necessary for photosynthesis to happen. Like that's the whole point. We're trying to capture solar energy and store it as chemical energy and glucose. We also need a ton of enzymes. Remember, every chemical reaction, we talked about this in concept one, has enzymes that make it happen or that catalyze it. Um, all of these reactions could happen on their own, but enzymes um, get it really get it going. But solar energy and these enzymes are not considered ingredients or results. Um, so we don't write them on either side of the arrow. Um, we write them over the arrow so that they're not on the reactant or product side. This is all going to go down in the chloroplast, and there's two parts of the chloroplast, two main parts, and there's two main steps in photosynthesis, so one happens in each. There's the grana and the stroma. I like to think of it as the pancakes and the syrup. So grana looks like stacks of pancakes. A grana would be this stack here, um, a granum, and then each individual pancake is called thylakoid membrane. And that's where the first step occurs. So think you put your pancakes on your plate first. That's step one. Step two is adding the syrup. So step two of photosynthesis happens in the fluid part, which is the stroma. So this is just the fluid that um, is surrounding the stacks of thylakoid or the grana is the stroma. So that is where the second step is going to occur. Okay, so again, two steps. We have the light-dependent reaction, also known as the photo part of photosynthesis, because photo means light. This step requires so solar energy. The second step is the light-independent reaction, and some people will refer to it as the dark reaction, just because you don't need solar energy to do it. This is also thought of to be the synthesis part of photosynthesis, because synthesis means... Um, or synthesize means to make, and so this is where we're actually going to make the sugar. So light first, sugar comes second. All right, let's talk through each of these steps in more detail. The light-dependent reaction, the overall purpose is to capture energy from the sun and to store that energy in energy-carrying molecules. Those two molecules are going to be ATP, which you are familiar with from concept two, and then NADPH. If you remember, I told you in Concept 2 notes that there are other molecules that the body uses um, to carry energy, but ATP is just the main currency. It's the one we're going to be accessing the most, but there are others, so we're introducing one here, NADPH. And you can remember it's a part of photosynthesis because it has a P. 
in it. We're going to see NADH um, in cellular respiration, and that one doesn't have a P. So I remember NADPH for photosynthesis. So this is happening in the granite, specifically those thylakoid membranes. So it's happening in the pancake, part of the chloroplast, because that is where chlorophyll is. And chlorophyll is a pigment that plants have that enables them to absorb or capture sunlight. And that's really important. You and I do not have chlorophyll. We cannot do photosynthesis. And so that's a very important distinction. Okay, so a summary of what's going down. This is going to be extremely oversimplified. Um, it's much more complicated than I'm going to make it out to be. So energy from the sun gets passed down something called the electron transport chain. And eventually, it basically just gets stored in the bonds at ATP and NADPH. So I like to say that we basically we have ADP and NADP+. Plus. We're going to charge those up with energy from the sun to be ATP and NADPH. When this happens, water while this is happening, water molecules are being split into hydrogens and oxygen. And then oxygen is released as a waste product. So that's where we get one of the products of photosynthesis. Then that ATP and that NADPH that we charged up with the sun and also those hydrogen ions that we ripped off the water are going to leave the grana, they're going to leave the pancakes, and go into the fluid, the stroma part, uh, the syrup part of the chloroplast. And that's where the next stage is going to happen. So I love this little picture that simplifies kind of where things are coming in and where they're going out. This one's a bit more complicated. So this is, we're looking at a plant. Remember, this is happening on a cellular level, though, not an organism level. It's happening in the cells in those chloroplasts. So light comes into the thylakoid as well as water. It's going to produce oxygen, and it's going to charge up ATP and NADPH that are going to move on to step two, which we'll talk about next. So the light-independent reaction. The purpose is going to use the energy from those energy-carrying molecules, that ATP and NADPH, and we're going to make sugar or glucose. And this is happening in the stroma. This is also known as the Calvin cycle. And it's a ton of chemical reactions that are powered by ATP and NADPH um, from the first reaction. And they combine hydrogen from waters with carbon dioxide in order to make sugar. And remember, one glucose molecule is six carbons bonded to 12 hydrogens bonded to six oxygen. So C6H12O6. Got to know that. So again, just summarizing, it's using carbon dioxide and the hydrogens from water, and we're making glucose in this step. And this is a better depiction of what's actually happening. There's a lot of small steps, a lot of rearranging and things going on, but I'm not going to go and make you understand those details. I just want you to understand more what we see here. So again, that ATP and NADPH from the first reaction, the light-dependent reaction, are used to power the second light-independent reaction, or the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle is going to use carbon dioxide and make sugar. And then it's, it's going to... Remember, we're going to rip off that phosphate, rip off that hydrogen to um, access the energy that they're carrying. And then the, that NADP plus and the ADP can go back and be charged up again. So this can continue happening over and over again as long as we have access to sunlight and water and carbon dioxide. And just remember, not every single producer does photosynthesis. Some do chemosynthesis. It's a very small amount, but some do. So that's when... Um, those organisms make their own food using chemicals instead of sunlight. Um, but in general, majority of producers are using sunlight and capturing it and storing it in glucose through photosynthesis. And that's our overview of photosynthesis.